Thanks guys, welcome. This is the pawn shop. My name's Cam. This is Arnaldo. We're here in Birmingham. Uh, what we do basically sell um, shoes, clothes, jewellery, art, and everything in between. I've personally been doing it for 10 years. I've been doing it for like three years myself. Started off on Facebook groups, Sneaker Myth, Basement, Crip City, Soul Supplier. Then I went into like eBay, like uh, 2022. Um, and then after that, uh, I literally made an Instagram um, and just been selling off Instagram. I built my followers up to about 20K and it got deleted, um, which made me think, you know what? I want to start um, depending on social media and actually have a physical store. The year after that, I opened a store just after Corona. And ever since that, we've been here for the last year. Yeah, really bit. Interesting yeah. fact, we sell the car boot. This is a car boot in the shop. It's a Rover Metro. Uh, and they were made in Birmingham, so that's why we got the car. Bought the car, chucked it in half, and then just stuck in the shop. These uh, are just basically like activities, like when customers come through. Basically, knock down these. That was good. But uh, knock down these to get something off a pair of trainers or a clothing piece. So we like to uh, interact with the customers and stuff. That's just like a piece of like um, history kind of thing. Kind of, it's like, kind of like a street lamp and then you've got like shoes that I always wanted when I was a kid. I remember being in year 10, um, going past JD and Bullring and seeing these in the window. Like, there's no way that I could afford them. I found them like four years ago um, and they actually ended up at an uh, outlet in Amsterdam. That's where the guy bought them. So the shoe that I always wanted ended up in Amsterdam somehow and I've ended up getting it. Um, these are also a, a sample from uh, JD. Uh, they've got the infamous uh, ball on the back. Uh, one, two, one, yeah. Here we've got the Supreme, t the Supreme Damien Hurst t-shirt. We've actually had two of these. We had a desktop one, uh, which we sold for uh, £2,000. And we've also got this used one now. We've got it pretty cheap, so rather than sell it, we just thought we'd... Uh, yeah, it looks better framed. Yeah, the way that we got it, there's um, like a Supreme group on Facebook. Uh, we saw someone selling it, we hit them off, and then we went to, I think it was Kent, Kent. to go and buy it. Yeah, it was Kent. Um, I was a bit iffy because the price is a bit uh, like weird. It's like, rather you know, cheap. Like, when it's like that cheap, like it seems like not believable. So we literally had to get it like checked there, yeah. many times, and then we ended up buying it. So yeah, France and Amsterdam is the first that we've been for shoes. Also been to Milan as well um, to buy like, a few shoes. <laughs> I bought um, night mags. Um, these Jordan one. Neutral Grays from 1985, uh, Chicago, Jordan 1's DS, and a few like old school pairs. Uh, this person was in the company like pretty high up, so like we got some crazy pairs from him, but we can't speak his name whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's good that um, reselling is a thing now, because uh, say some kids struggle to find jobs or whatever, like because obviously resell instead of doing something bad, let's say, they could put the money towards doing that and flipping it, and a lot of people's made like, big businesses like obviously this shop this whole shop side from that in it so I think all in all it's good because it gives people chances that some people never had like our backgrounds no one would think that we'd have a store even to this day as we walk people yeah. walk past they don't believe that it's a shoe shop or whatever it's just thinking that we're chilling or whatever. We're gonna go through some pairs now for the research project. Let's go Come on, this one. first of all we got the Jordan one neutral or natural whatever Still wearable, still flexible. Um, we got these from a guy in France about three years ago. Compared to Jordan ones nowadays, um, this leather's a lot more soft. The sole's more hard wearing. They're a lot higher than normal Jordan ones. What do you reckon the old pair or that pair? Personally, yeah, I would have kept these if, if they if they fit me. Swear down. Yeah, I hear it. Big heat on Almo's feet. These, Jesus, uh, the Nike Air Yeezy One Zen. This is what happens to shoes if you don't wear your shoes. So. Fall apart. These are actually from Size. The guy used to work at Size Birmingham in a, when these released. His older brother got in them and then he had them and he hasn't worn them since. Um, but we still wanted to buy them off him. Sleep. Lit. These are um, Chicago Jordan 1. Once again, a lot better leather than recent Jordans. Higher, and these are a crazy size, they're like a 3.5, which you don't use the CDs in as well. Yeah, like night four. Great pair. And these are 
994 bread as well in a size 7. This is the Jordan 7 Dornbecker. If, um, if you don't know what Dornbecker is, Dornbecker is a hospital which Nike sponsors every year and they release trainers um, designed by kids that have terminal illnesses. These are some of the details on the shoe. Give it a good pull. Gotta enjoy the game on the sole. And it's got a kid with a Jordan guitar at the bottom. So the, I like these pairs because they're always um, different and unique to all of uh, Jordan's pairs. Size asked us to sell these, we're not going to sell them. <laughs> the um, Air Max 90 Cores, got the signature X there. And they've also got a sign box, I'll show you that now. Now walking over, this is a sign shoe box with an illustration of uh, that Cores on himself there. As well. so, uh, and it goes to a, a lad called uh, James. James. So, so wherever you are, James. Shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the Jordan 4 Kwai 54s. This is like one of 24 pairs in the whole world. So with this pair, they used a different leather and um, they're basically made for Kwai 54. Kwai 54 is a basketball tournament which ha happens in France by yearly, maybe, maybe every year. Um, but like, yeah, Jordan released a bunch of products. Yeah, so these are a cool pair, man. And there's only 24 in the world. 10,000 pound. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> the Air Max 1 FB is most commonly refers back to that design that Yeezy did. I actually wanted a pair of these, but couldn't get them, man. Saw that too fast. <laughs> oh, you probably took them all? Yeah, they, they <laughs> 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 and these are the moon landings Air Max 90s I call them Air Max Armstrongs that's a good name <laughs> oh this has got the print of like the moon surface so you can see here it's got the American flag on it as well so obviously there was like the first person to the moon allegedly allegedly um, <laughs> these are fully um, 3M as well so when you take a picture um, they're fully reflective all over as well just thought I'd come into the back and show you some other pairs that we've got. First up, Air Max 95 Stash. These are from 2005. Air Max 95's always got like good, like strong, long lasting. Yeah. Uh, basement dunks, as you can see here. They've all got like different panels on it as well. So like, this is leather, this is suede, this is like corduroy, this is uh, like nylon. Even though it's all black, it's like all different materials all around it. And it's got the most basement logo. Another interesting fact, I think there's only one size 14 in the world and he's got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh that, little, that little red pair. Oh, that old thing. <laughs> uh, these are the Nike Yeezy 2 white Octobers. All white. Great, like, white suede here. White. It's by the white summer. laces. Oh, yeah. These actually glow in the dark. I can't turn off the light, but if I could, they'd glow. One way that you can tell if Yeezy 2 Red Octobers are real, is the smell. If you smell them in a smell like egg, more than likely, they're legit. And that's due to the factory rushing um, the production of these pairs. They all ended up smelling. Jordan 6, more classical than Beethoven. Infrareds from the year 2000. Don't put <laughs> Why are you pulling up like that for, bro? Look, they ain't been worn, so yeah, this starts like detail, as you can see here. It's a pair. Hard. What? Your heart dropped in it. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> no jokes. Air Max One Kid Robots. Obviously, if you know Kid Robot, the brand used to be a massive brand back in the day. These sadly need a resale, um, but we're gonna do that soon. Great shoe. Impeccable leather. Kid Robot at the back. What else do you need? So now we're going to pick the final four pairs for resize. Number one, the almighty Air Max 90 Dave White. This shoe is crazy. Definitely reminds me of the Air Max 95 Neon, uh, the classical UK colorway. Um, this has got like suede and new book all across. Great shoe. Another shoe which I think is great is the Nike SB Cali Low, released in 2004. This shoe is supposed to be the representative of the Californian state flag. Hard to come by, released in 2004, I think it was. Uh, that's a great pair. It was the New Balances, which is right here. These are released with uh, Crooked Tongues. They were the um, like the forefront of sneaker culture. Before social media, they had a thing called forums. 
So like used to go onto the forums, talk about sneakers, clothes, um, and this was a great collab. And uh, it's made in England. So this is the Air Max 95 Stash. Stash is a graffiti artist from New York, one of the best. It's got his graffiti on the insole, like wearable materials here, as well as waterproof as well. Uh, this should definitely be in the top four. Yes guys, this is the pawn shop. You've seen what we're about. Now it's time for you guys to vote on your top four pairs.